Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP. It's Saturday. I like to change things up. We're going to talk about a lot of different things in today's video. According to Google, the Federal Reserve plans to take ownership of XRP as a global payment solution. It also reports Ripple is buying back XRP as part of their buyback program to take it out of retail hands and into institutional hands. Now, the, what Google is saying is that the Federal Reserve plans to own XRP. It doesn't say that they're going to buy back XRP from me or you but people are interpreting it that way now the buyback talk is back once again and i never believed in that buyback in any way we'll talk more about that in a minute ripple purchased millions of xrp under buyback program in quarter two the xrp buyback program is intended to be sold to on-demand liquidity firms the use of ripple's odl solution has increased significantly in the last quarter. Now we know on-demand liquidity is amping up around the world, but it's still happening at a very low level. Mass adoption will eventually happen, and that will drive the price of XRP. XRP buyback proposal looks like a scam, says David Schwartz. And that's why I said, you know, think about it. Everybody's talking about the Fed, buying back our XRP at $37,500 per XRP. I actually think it's now up to $127,000 or $122,000 per XRP. Let me tell you something. That would be absolutely incredible, and I would definitely sell at that price. But it doesn't make sense for the Fed to do that. They could just go right now and buy up all the XRP they would ever want off the exchanges and as the price went up people would sell also so they would never have to pay those extreme amounts of dollars for your xrp it that's why it doesn't make sense however the fed is going to utilize ripple net and xrp in the future retail is not that many people and most will sell between 10 and $50. Elite really doesn't care. At the end, retail will use the money to buy stupid things, giving back the money to the elite. And that's why I said, you know, people already are talking about selling and buying a Lambo, selling, buying a mansion. And people are going to sell at different price points. And it's going to be way less than $100. Most people are going to be out of XRP before we ever get to $100. And then anybody holding still, most of them will sell before we hit $500. But supply and demand is going to be a game changer for XRP in the future. Because there's going to be a very high demand for this cryptocurrency once institutional investors get here. Imagine you have a thousand XRP. You sell it at 88 cents, it crashes 70%, and you thought you can buy back at 26 cents. The markets crash and exchanges go down. You watch XRP moon as you always knew it would. You now have zero XRP. For some people, XRP just made them cry for weeks to come. Now imagine we get to $10, and people will sell at $10. Because everybody's still expecting that major pullback all the way down to $2. But what if that pullback does not happen? What if we continue upward from there? What say we hit $50 instead of pulling back to $2? People are going to be very upset about that. This is a cryptocurrency you cannot underestimate. People always say, oh, we'll never hit $20 because of market cap and previous cycles. Other people say it's never going to hit three digits in our lifetime. But when you really look at the direction Ripple's going in, and you look at where XRP could possibly be a year or two from now, three and four digits makes a lot of sense to me.
which company leads crypto lobbying in the United States. Our study shows that Coinbase, Binance, Kraken, and Ripple, all of which have come under scrutiny in the SEC's recent crackdown on crypto, are among the top 10 lobbying spenders in 2023, crypto companies and organizations. Right now, there's a major crackdown happening around the exchanges, and I think that's going to continue. And a lot of people are worried about now cashing out their crypto. What about the exchanges going down? What if the exchanges are gone in the future? I think there's going to be other options, and I think Zoom is on to something here. The founder of XRP Ledger Labs and Zoom Wallet has hinted at a groundbreaking partnership with MasterCard. It aims to integrate MasterCard debit cards with the XRP Ledger. So imagine you don't sell your XRP. Instead, you buy things using your XRP through Zoom and MasterCard. And then later when the price is even higher because most debit cards have a daily limit. Say you want to buy something more extravagant. I'm sure there's going to be ways that you could buy directly from your wallet to, say, the car dealership's wallet or to the mortgage payment, whatever. There's going to be better options as time goes on because we're watching innovation push ahead already. U.S. judge threatens SEC for false arguments in crypto firms' case. A U.S. judge is warning the SEC with threatened sanctions after the SEC used false arguments in a case against crypto firm Debt Box. The commission's lawyers used these arguments to convince a court to impose a temporary restraining order on Debt Box. The court filing from Judge Chief Judge Robert Shelby of Utah shows that the SEC attorneys could be sanctioned for making misleading arguments about crypto project debt boxes alleged efforts to transfer its assets and investors funds overseas. In turn, the court would freeze the project's bank accounts. The SEC's misinterpretations undermine the integrity of the case's proceedings, in addition to causing debt box irreparable harm, Judge Shelby said in the court order. Debtbox has demonstrated it had neither moved the funds outside the U.S. nor closed its bank accounts before the SEC's hearings. So the SEC's lawyers lied in court. Maybe we will now start to see the SEC get hit with sanctions. Maybe it could stop all the enforcement actions. We'll have to wait and see what plays out. Brad Garlinghouse shares his thoughts on banks creating their own stablecoins. Now, for as long as I've been holding XRP, there's been so many XRP killers that emerged. JP Morgan coin was one of them. Remember, that was going to be the end of XRP. Take a listen to what Brad says here. It is interesting you say that because you look at, you know, JP Morgan, where you had Diamond saying that he thinks Bitcoin is a fraud, a fraud. And, and, and then he launched a coin. Yeah. <laughs> and it sort of reminds me a little bit of PayPal's journey too, the sort of contentious relationship with banks and the uh, credit card rails. Um, so are you seeing the shift happen? And again, like, where is this five years from now? Are you able to exist in a world where um, JP, the JPM coin exists and other banks have their own forms of um, cryptocurrencies? Look, the the JPM coin, I think, actually, in many ways, has been great for the industry because, okay. you know, someone who not that long ago was saying Bitcoin's a fraud is now leaning in and it was a macro good thing for the industry and bringing credibility. I'll give it a thumbs up. The, the JPM coin, though, if you really think about it, and there's a lot of banks represented in this room, you know, is Wells Fargo going to use the JPM coin? Probably not. Is B of A going to use the JPM coin? Probably not. And so are we all going to have a Wells Fargo coin and a B of A coin? And now what about the interoperability between these coins? The other thing that makes no sense to me, in order to get a JPM coin, you deposit a dollar in a JPM account, so it's one-to-one -one backed in dollars, and you can only use it intra-JPM's ledger. Why didn't I just use a dollar? <laughs> I actually don't understand what problem that was solving. I think you're illustrating why there's been a lot of skepticism in crypto and the blockchain, and blockchain right here. And it's not that people don't believe in it and that it has a very useful case it's just that it hasn't picked up in a significant way when you know tim said thought it might have changed the world by now and yeah. dan are you surprised it is eventually going to change the world
But like I said, there's been so many XRP killers out there, but yet not one of them has killed XRP. It's a game-changing cryptocurrency that provides on-demand liquidity. And no matter what the banks come up with, no matter what SWIFT comes up with, they're still never going to be able to compete with Ripple and XRP. And that's why people need to stay focused when they're holding this cryptocurrency. People right away, they panic sell because of news like that. Oh, that's it. It's over for XRP. But then we soon find out that it turns into nothing once again. And XRP, just because it's sitting at such a cheap price right now, doesn't mean it can go, it can't go from 60 cents all the way up past ten dollars overnight because that can definitely happen and a lot of people still don't understand that they're still relying on the previous cycles and the market caps i'm relying on utility ripple xrp explosive price moves now in the offering offing amid a red hot adoption streak by institutions and the institutions are now starting to get interested in crypto you see all the talk around tokenization e etfs are popping up all over the place we haven't seen one get approved by the sec yet and i think gary's very reluctant to even talk about it and he's going to hold it back as long as he can but that time is definitely going to come as well and you want to be here for that time you want to be here when the institutions get here you want to be here when enterprise really starts to onboard the crypto because that's where the value is going to come from re resilient in holding xrp no amount of FUD will make me sell. There's always FUD around this cryptocurrency. There's people out there that just absolutely hate XRP. And most of the time, the people that are FUDing are also holding this cryptocurrency. I'm making videos on XRP, and in the comments section, people are like, come on, it's still sitting at 60 cents. Listen, I get your frustration, but you know, you got to know what you're holding at the same time. You know, you could FUD all you want, but it, it's never going to make me sell my XRP. Most of you have such strong hands. You've been holding most likely longer than I've been holding, and I've been holding over five years now. So nothing's going to shake me out. I'm waiting until the price absolutely takes off, and I want to see the options that are available when that time comes. And that's what I'm really waiting on. I'm here for it. Better to be early than trying to catch the train once it's moving. And all those people still sitting on the sidelines waiting to get in once the price starts to move. Why would you wait? Now's when you want to be buying. And you know, we always were told that XRP is going to lead us to life-changing money. And it's definitely going to. You know that's going to happen. So you're on the train now. You're holding XRP. Say three years you've been holding this cryptocurrency. You're on the train. You know once the train reaches the end of the line, you're going to get financial freedom. Why would you get off at the next stop? Or the stop after that. Why not ride it to the end of the rails? Get the most out of your investment. Maybe you could get passive income from your investment. Who knows? There's so many possibilities coming into this space. We're so early. We're watching everything emerge. People are always wondering why the price isn't moving. Because we get announcement after announcement. But it's just an announcement. Then things have to build out and grow, and then all of a sudden, the value will come in. And it's going to be a shocking time when that happens. You're going to be checking your phone and being like, wow, I can't believe I made this much money off of my investment. And that's what this is all about. You know, I don't get rich unless you get rich. And if XRP was to go to zero, guess what? You would lose everything and so would I. And that's why I talk about these cryptocurrencies because they have so much potential behind them. I don't ever see XRP losing in any way. Brad is one of the greatest leaders in crypto. He's literally going after all the money. He took a step back from cross-border payments to get into tokenization, acquired Mateco for custody. Then he looked into at carbon credits, started going in that direction, leaning in on AI. Whatever the newest thing out there that's going to be tied to trillions of dollars, 
Brad is going in that direction. We are going to get rich. All we got to do is stay on the train. Until it happens, stay patient, stay positive. Let's get rich together. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.